In this short video, we'll introduce the 2D Frame Analysis module in TEDS. This is a powerful module that allows you to analyze any 2D structure, including braced or moment frames, trusses, or even single span or multi span beams. Multiple materials and sections can be modeled within a single file, and analysis structures can have unlimited nodes, elements, loads, and combinations. In TEDS, go to New, locate the 2D Frame Analysis, and click on the calculation. Make sure to review the notes on the right side of the screen. This will list the calculation scope, detailed general notes, and revision history. Double click on the calculation to start. In the user interface, you'll see two main sections. The dynamic sketch at the top will update as you input information. This allows you to review graphically the frame you're creating. The input table at the bottom is where you'll input the information required to create, load, and review the frame. Make sure to work through the input tabs from left to right. Some information must be input before you can proceed to the later tabs. Following this process will ensure a valid calculation. You must start by defining the nodes that will make up the frame. Remember, every element must have a node at its end. If you have a brace that frames into the center of the beam, that intersection point requires a node. I recommend starting at 0, 0 for the leftmost node of your frame and inputting the rest of the coordinates referenced from that location. It may be helpful to switch to a vertical view of the sketch for frames or structures that are taller rather than wider. Once the nodes have been defined, go through and define the external support points. For nodes that have an external support, you can set the X, Z, or rotational degree of freedom. Fixing X will prevent translation horizontally at the node, fixing Z will prevent vertical movement of the node, and fixing rotation will add a moment restraint. You can change the local coordinate system of each individual node, and you can add a spring stiffness for the node support. In the Materials tab, you can choose from a drop-down list with predefined common materials, or you can type into the input boxes to input your own properties. After selecting a material, make sure to click in another dialog box to confirm the selection and auto-populate the values, and within the same project you can have different materials. This is an analysis calculation, so you must define your sections to be analyzed. You can select from our built-in options or input your own custom properties. You can choose from several material types, and depending on the selection you can define the size of the member, or select the member from an available table of sections. Within a single project, you can define as many sections as required, as well as sections from different material types. The Elements tab is where you connect the dots. Define the elements between the nodes to be analyzed. Select the appropriate node from the drop-down menu to define the start and end of each element. Every node must be connected by an element. Notice the second floor beam will be made up of two elements, one from node 2 to 7 and another from node 7 to 5. Select the section as needed for each element. The corresponding elements will use that section until you choose a new one. Once all elements are defined, you can verify and change the internal fixities. Both beams will be pinned, therefore I must free the start and end moment. At the second floor beam, make sure to only pin the start of element 5 and the end of element 6. The center node must remain fixed to ensure there's moment continuity within the beam itself at the brace point. This maintains the two elements as one beam. If you release the ends at the center node, this would become two separate beams pinned at each end. I also want to pin the end of the braces, so again I'll free both ends of elements 8 and 9. Design Members allows you to connect separate elements into a single design member. Define a member by inputting a name, then click on the Edit button to define the elements that make up that member. Also make sure to indicate the supports of the member. This makes applying the load and reviewing results easier as you can do it for the entire member as opposed to each individual element. This is also required if you're working in the design modules where only design members are exported to the design portion of the calculation. The design portion is not included in this 2D frame analysis calculation. The Load Cases tab is where load gets applied to the frame. On the left are a few load cases already defined. You can delete and add to the list as needed. You can also type in your own name if you want to identify your load differently than what's available. On the right hand side, select the load type and apply it to the frame. 
Member loads will be referencing the entire member. You can also apply loads to individual elements or nodes. UDL is a uniformly distributed load and VDL is a variable distributed load. Trapezoidal loads are triangular and go from a value to zero over the full length of the member. The load selected on the left will be the active load case in the input table on the right. Also, the sketch will show the load for the currently selected case. When applying loads, positive vertical load is applied downward, positive horizontal load is applied towards the right, and positive moment is about the out of plane y axis to the right. For opposite load directions, input a negative value. So, to input the load, select the member. Ratio allows you to input the load based on a percentage of the beam. For example, if you start at 0 and go to 0.25, the load will be placed from start of beam to the first quarter point. If you change this to 0.5, it loads the first half of the beam. The ratio option is useful if you have a sloped member where you don't know the exact length values to apply loads at. You can change the type to absolute to type in an actual distance. Now you can set the load to go from 1 foot to 3 feet along the beam. Add all required load on the frame. Be careful to add the load into the appropriate load case. For horizontal loads, change to a node load type. Select the node number, the load case wind, and input the load in the x direction. The final step is to define the load combinations. You can manually define combinations by typing directly into the dialog boxes or quickly generate combinations by clicking on the generate button. Select the design code. Based on the load cases, the available combinations will be listed below. If you have given your load case a unique name, you can identify the type here to match with the correct load factor. All combinations with existing load cases will be checked automatically you can add or remove combinations as needed. The next screen allows you to modify any factors as needed. Click Finish to return the main screen. You will see the program automatically generates your strength and service combinations. Once you click Results, the program performs the analysis and updates the results on the screen. Here you can review the results information before exiting the interface. You can see the information graphically or in the table. Select to view results for single load combinations or an envelope. Select all combinations to be enveloped, then review the forces. Quickly review the nodal deflections by changing the result option from this drop-down menu. You can also select an individual member to review. Finally, the output allows you to select what information you want displayed in the final report. Go through and check the options that you want included, tables or sketches, and once ready click finish to complete the calculation. The chosen information will be output to the document. That brings us to the end of this introduction to the 2D frame analysis.